Welcome to the semi-final action from the Elmira Winter Crokinole Classic. On your left, you have Justin Slater. Anyone who's a fan of competitive Crokinole is familiar with this guy. On the right, we have Travis Keener, who runs one of the Extra Pint Crokinole Clubs. Traveled here from Ohio to test his skills. We started with 47 competitors, now we're down to the final four. The other semifinal matchup is between Andrew Hutchinson and Connor Ryman. Justin was the top seed in this match, so that is why Travis shot first. Both of these two are fantastic 20 shooters. Travis was the first to miss, although Slater unable to secure the off. That red button is sitting just inside. Nice drift 20 by Travis, making Slater pay for that mistake and not getting the red button all the way off the board. Ooh, a little long again. Beautiful rollout by, actually, yeah, I was saying beautiful rollout, but Slater did not want to roll out there because he is down in the 20 count. I'm guessing that Travis is happy with where he left his button, but I'm sure he would like to have gotten the black off as well. Ooh. Nice roll in. Had he secured that 20, it would have been great because he didn't. He actually set Slater up. The advantage shifted back to Slater's side. Slater takes a two to zero lead in this race to nine. There we're seeing Travis make a nice, beautiful drift 20. There, Slater is making Keener pay for leaving him a nice backboard. Slater to act first in this second round. Starts with his open 20. Travis Keener has been known to post videos of himself practicing his open 20s. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think the highest I've ever seen him make in a row was in the 20s. It was, uh, maybe somebody can fact check me, but I believe it was 21 or 22 in a row. The man is a machine when he finds his range. Okay, now we have Travis ahead in the 20 count again, which is no easy feat when you're sitting across the board from Justin Slater. So he has the 20 lead as well as he has the hammer in this round. Slater able to pull that back off of the button. I'm sure he would like to have had a 20, but even without that, he's pulled play back onto his side, maybe be able to create a better opportunity for himself. See what Keener's able to do. Nice hit and stick, leaving it between the pegs. Slater won't have many options other than a follow through, or he may try to push it in just a bit and wait for a better opportunity to, uh, on a later shot. Oh, there was an option I hadn't even considered. He was able to pull that back. A nice hide. Pretty much going to force Keener to go through Hogan's alley. It's going to be looking to hit and stick. Nice. Nice shot. Oh. Angle was perfect. Just a little light on the weight. Now Travis makes him pay for leaving a backboard. Another backboard from Slater. In Didn't really impact anything. As in not at all. Keener able to level the match at two to two in this race to nine. First to miss in the open 20 race with C. Slater likely to hit and stick, leaves it in a nice spot. It's gonna be tough for Keener to work with unless he's able to get the off and then catch a peg. We'll see what he, yeah, drifts it over to the side. Maybe able to give himself a, a different look on his next shot. Slater likely to hit and stick. Happy to keep it in there around the pegs. You know, uh, Keener fairly new to the competitive Crokinole scene. He's been to a few NCAA tournaments. I'm not sure he's been to a Final Four. I know he's done well. He's been to the A pool, he's done well, but I am impressed with his patience here. He seems calm, he's checking out his options. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure what he was going for there, but um, yeah, regardless, he doesn't seem nervous. He seems, uh, yeah, wisely peels to force play back to the middle. Although giving Slater open 20s isn't isn't always the best strategy, but uh, yeah, this was exactly what, well, I'm sure he would like to have had a backboard, but at least he's got play back in the middle. 
Before he had peeled play on Slater's side, he had little to no opportunity to make anything happen without peeling. Yeah, pushing for the 20 there. Likely going to pay for this. We'll see if Slater's able to convert this. Ops for the touch 20. Carefully removing it. Yeah, we'll see if what Keener has at this point. Whether he'll come up the up the right hand lane or maybe come up the left hand lane. He may be better off coming up the left hand lane. One, it might be a better angle for the bump and run. And two, not leave Slater just completely set up for another 20. Oh. That was a little quick shooting on Slater's part. I don't know if he uh, just uh, just didn't take his time on that. See, there he's able to convert on a touch 20. Keener's able to drop this 20, really put the pressure on Slater. Slater needs an off and a 20 to tie this round. Going for a lot and didn't get it. Keener now up four to two in this race to nine. As much of a student of the game as uh, Travis Keener is, I'm sure he spent many of hours watching competitive crokinole footage. So sometimes uh, if, you, if you spend a lot of time doing that, then sitting across from Slater can be a little bit intimidating. Yeah, left a hanger there. Slater made him pay for it. Hmm. Yeah, this could be an opening here for Keener. Should be able to. There's definitely an opportunity there for an off and a 20, or at least a touch 20. We'll see what he opts for. The off and the 20, beautiful. Mm, Slater lips out. There may be another opportunity. If he can convert this, then they're going to be back to even on the 20 count, and even with uh, with shots left as well. It's a little, maybe a little far away. It's going to be a, a, a finesse touch in order for him to get this. Yeah, almost. It was headed in the right direction. Slater made him pay for that. Goes up three to one in the 20 count and a pretty commanding lead, even against the hammer. I shouldn't say that. He's one mistake away from being back to even again. Both players finding their range. I promise you the game is not as easy as they're making it look. Yeah, Slater secures those two points. Keener takes, an takes advantage of an opportunity to practice his open 20s as he will need to be ready to start the next round. Beautiful, almost kind of semi-drift 20, semi-touch 20. Or sorry, drop back 20. Keener comes up short with his open 20 attempt there. Pushing for that follow through. He gets a bit of push in. If he wasn't going to get the 20, it was kind of ideal because he didn't push in so close to set Slater up. Let's see what he goes for on this one. Good push. At least it's on his side. He's leaving Slater with a, yeah, bit of an awkward takeout there. Don't know what Keener may go for. I don't know if he'll go for a follow through, maybe try to pull it back for a hide. Hmm. His red disc ended up in a not terrible spot, but not getting the black off could prove costly later. Slater can tend to peel. He does not want to mess around on the other side, giving Keener the opportunity to hide from him. Now Keener forced to peel. Slater likely very happy to go back to a 20s race. Not that Keener is weak in that category. It's just that Slater is so sharp. Just needs a valid shot to secure this two points. Yeah, there's there's Slater's strategy coming through. You see that takeout on the far side. Slater going up six to four in this race to nine. See if Keener can get back on track. Yep. That one wiped its feet, as they say. Oh, Slater a little long. He's on the right side of the hole. Keener's got a pretty good follow through on him. We'll see if he's able to convert this or he may try the roll away. That was a beautiful shot. Again, I really feel those shots are underappreciated. 
rolling away from the middle like that. And uh, although this is a... <laughs> So I love about Crokinole is that there's always these different setups. This is this is unique. I'm I'm curious to see what Keener's going to do with this. Oh, not what I expected. I don't know if Slater's got an angle in, but he's certainly uh, yeah. Hmm. Beautiful touch there, leaving Keener in behind a post. Nice takeout. Both of these players making some fantastic shots. Not able to hide quite as well this time. Oh, Keener gets the off, but also loses a shooter. We're back down to a three-button round. Hmm. Slater a little long on that attempt. Keener content to hit and stick as he has hammer in this round. Slater with the hit and stick, bringing play a little closer to the middle. We'll see if Keener's able to keep it away. Oh, I'm not sure if he was going for a 20 there or just got a little more carry than he was hoping for. That was costly. Yeah. Keener cost himself a point by just allowing his shooter to drift in a little too close there. And I am not criticizing. He is playing fantastic, and that happens so easily. Slater up 7-5 to five in this race to 9 and with the hammer advantage in this round. Oh, Keener came up a little short, but Slater unable to make him pay for it. This is what I would call a heavy hanger. This is, it's absolutely doable, but that is a, still a tough shot. Oh, I'm waiting for one of them to start screaming like Happy Gilmore. You too good for your home? It just didn't seem to want to drop. <laughs> See if Keener may, may be lining up for a touch 20 here. Yeah, I think he was, but yeah, that's tough. He didn't get the 20 or the off. That is not a great position to be in against Slater's hammer. Slater does a really good job keeping that away. Keener's going to need to use a peg for sure. He may be looking to see if there's any chance to get a double. If he's super greedy, he may be looking for a double and a 20. Gets the double. But he's in a 20s race with one less button than Slater. That's not uh, its not necessarily where you want to find yourself. Oh, a little heavy on that attempt. Here we are, two shots left each. Pressure on Keener. He's going to want the off and the 20, a touch 20. Yeah, although it wouldn't be a bad thing, then he would be banking on another mistake from Slater. So let's see if he goes for this follow-through drift 20 here. He does. Overpowered it, lost everything. Slater secures the round and the match with that 20. Awesome. Keener put up a valiant battle there. What a fantastic match. Two great 20 shooters, some great finesse shots. Really hope you enjoyed this. Slater will move on to face the winner between Connor Ryman and Andrew Hutchinson in the other semi-final match. Those two will be battling it out to see who is the champion of the Elmira Winter Crokinole Classic. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that jazz, and we will see you in the future.